the Taliban ears onto necklaces. As he told Beto O'Rourke in one of the Democratic debates, I don't need lessons from you on courage. Ugh. Who talks like that? Not people who've actually been there, that's for sure. Phonies talk like that. And Buttigieg is, is nothing if not a phony. Kyle Smith of National Review spent some time looking into Buttigieg's military record, and here's what he found. When Buttigieg joined the Navy, he didn't do it in the usual way. He didn't go enlisted, he didn't sign up for ROTC, he never attended officer candidate school. Instead, Buttigieg joined through something called direct commission. Take a physical, sign the form, and you're in. Buttigieg never even completed basic training. As Kyle Smith put it, imagine someone got a diploma direct from Harvard, but never wrote any papers or took any tests. That'd be a little different, right? Not surprisingly, Hunter Biden joined the Navy in exactly the same way. When Buttigieg deployed to Afghanistan, he didn't go as a member of a unit. He went as a one-man reinforcement. He never saw combat. Instead, he spent his time sitting on base or ferrying people around in a jeep. You heard it in the video we just played. 119 trips outside the wire. But that's not an official stat from the military. Buttigieg apparently counted himself for future use in a presidential debate. Just another Lego block. The good news is it didn't work in the end. Democratic voters may have bad ideas, but they know a transparent fraud when they see one, and they just did. So Mayor Pete doesn't just sermonize about his military record. He also gives actual sermons. At a CNN town hall last night, he once again argued that the right in America is a collection of fake Christians, not up to the moral caliber of St. Pete Buttigieg, the Episcopalian. I, I find uh, a message in Scripture that is very different from what the political right seems to, to want to talk about all the time. Uh, a lot about poverty, a lot about compassion, a lot about humility. Do you think it is impossible to be a Christian and support President Trump? Well, I'm not going to tell other Christians how to be Christians, but I will say I cannot find any compatibility between the way this president conducts himself and anything that I find in Scripture. I think there was a concordance up there on stage with him. He's a real scriptural expert. He's Dietrich Bonhoeffer at Flossenburg, pouring over the Gospel of John. Yeah, he's a moral expert. That's how he knows things like partial birth abortion. Great. It is extremely important that no one person have to be subjected to some other person's interpretation of their own religion. I know we're not going to agree. Partial birth abortion is something that was coming up in, in, like I said, Governor Northam. It was a huge controversy when he was running for governor. I, I think people, even Democrats, and there are a lot of pro-life Democrats in the country, want to know exactly where your line is, because you will be the president if you win. Right, but my point is that it shouldn't be up to a government official to draw the line. It should be up to the woman who's confronted with the court. Well, they are impressed over at The View. Ryan Glesman is a senior pastor at Community Church of God in Cleo, Michigan. He's also Mayor Buttigieg's brother-in-law. He joins us tonight. Ryan, thanks so much for coming on. So, look, I, I'm completely in favor of candidates talking about their faith and living it, by the way. But all of a sudden you have Mayor Pete Buttigieg suggesting that Christians, Christianity and conservatism are incompatible. Where did that come from and is it true? Yeah, in the height of intellectual dishonesty for Pete to make claims that to, that there's no compatibility with being a Christian and voting for Trump, which Pete, in fact, is the one who is pushing agendas and rhetoric that is against, clearly against scripture. So it's just very interesting to me that Pete wants to use this type of terminology. You played that clip from The View, and I'm just in a, at a state of lament when you hear that we have someone running for commander in chief who can't make a moral decision on whether to keep a child after it's already been born or to have it killed. What kind, what kind of moral uh, uh, suggestions is he going to be given if he he can't come to a, an understanding of that. It's just, it's alarming, it's extreme, and it, it just concerns me, uh, Tucker. It's just, it's unbelievable. Well, of course, it's it's sickening to the, to the layman, just the idea of killing a child who's been born, but you're a Christian pastor, you're familiar with the scriptures, the New Testament. Is that consistent with Christian teaching, the idea that you should be allowed to kill a child? 
Absolutely. Uh, there, you'll find nowhere in Scripture. And specifically, just I encourage people, this is last time I was on here, Tucker, that go to, to I, I encourage Pete and everyone in America to read Psalm 139, 13 through 16, where God says in his word that every single person is fearfully, wonderfully made in the image of God. Go to Jeremiah 1, 5, that it talks about God knew us before we were ever in our mother's womb. You know, Jesus says in, in Scripture all throughout New Testament, Jesus says, I've come to give life and to give life more abundantly. Jesus came to give life, not take life so this completely is against the word of god and it's just it's outlandish for someone like pete to be pushing this pro-abortion anti-god rhetoric like he is on the campaign trail no i just i cannot resist a sectarian question i'm, I'm an episcopalian i'll submit that up front but have you ever seen an episcopalian wag his finger in the face of people to make a moral point i thought that wasn't allowed last time i checked yeah, absolutely. Just everything that Pete is pushing is, uh, it's an anti-God. I'm just going to be honest with you. Nothing lines up with scripture. And for him to make cases like to say that you cannot be a Christian and vote for Trump. And he's the one that is uh, openly contradicting God's word over and over. He, I know he uses scripture over and over again on the campus because he knows the importance of the American people, of what the, the founding fathers found America on was this Christian, uh, geo, geo Christian values, Tucker. Yeah, I agree with that. Ryan, thanks so much for joining us tonight. I appreciate it, and good luck next Thanksgiving yeah. uh, with him. Yes, yeah, thank you so much. Yeah. Pete Buttigieg's brief surge appears to be ending. Elizabeth Warren is done. It's looking like a two-man race on the Democratic side between Michael Bloomberg and Bernie Sanders. So what happens next? Dana Prino is the person we go to 